Starting us off with number 10 is the Horton Mines. This abandoned mercury mine is in Pershing County, Nevada, and is at the height of 5,400 feet, which is pretty damn high if I do say so myself. Now, back in 2013, Frank Hood from the YouTube channel Exploring Abandoned Mines uploaded a video of him exploring this Horton Mine. The mine dates back to the mid 1800s, and Frank has explored hundreds of abandoned mines, but he claimed this one was the creepiest one he's ever been to. And I trust Frank, I've been in zero mines, he's been in more than a hundred, so he wins. It starts off with him going into the mine and realizing there's water streaming out of it, which apparently is not a good thing when you come to mines. And the mine is old as hell, there are hanging chains coming down from the roof of it, and just other rusty abandoned mesh equipment. Frank actually refused to fully go into the mine because he was that scared, and he said he felt the sensation that something was watching him. The air just felt sinister, and he didn't seem welcomed into the mine. The camera then pans to the entrance of the cave, and when it pans back to the tunnel, that that's when you see one of the chains swinging back and forth quite a bit. And none of the chains had moved beforehand, so you can tell there's not much wind going in and out of this mine. But this chain was deliberately moving, after which another chain started moving as well. And at that point, Frank was like, peace out, I'm not gonna die by some evil miner ghost today. Me neither. Good on you, Frank. Coming at number 9, we have Hashima Island, Japan. Coal used to be the biggest thing on the planet. Everyone wanted coal. You could use it in your home, you could use it to make electricity, you could use it to make diamonds. It was the hottest thing on the market. Everyone was working in coal mines. You had grown men going down there to try and make a living for their family, and you had kids going down there to make sure they can make good money and never grow up to be men. There was even birds down there to warn you if toxic gas was coming through and ready to end your life. Well, this fuel was so popular that Japan built a whole city on an island around a coal mine. In the 70s, this place was a hot spot and families were being moved over there in the boatloads to make this place the new coolest coal mine in the world. And it just might have been for a time. That's until everyone started to switch over to gas. Then the mine's profits started to plummet and slowly but surely the whole area became a ghost town. Now there's almost nothing there. Just the shells of buildings that give off the vibe of a nuclear wasteland. Not really the best place to take your next vacation unless you and your hubby have a thing for desolate landscapes. All right. At number 8 we have Wild Deck Mine. So back in 2016, Frank Hood, our MVP of abandoned mines, went to this 150 year old Wild Deck gold mine in Australia. In the video he walks through the tunnels as per normal, but the deeper he gets, the spookier everything becomes. Ooh, oh, oh. I hope you were listening to this at night with like some popcorn and like that really added to the soundtrack. <laughs> now at one point you can hear what sounds like many people whispering and you can literally hear it in the video. Now at first Frank thinks it's wind, but you know how wind has this wind sound like whoosh, whoosh. The sound in the video was of ghostly whispers. Wind does not sound like that. Now as soon as he stops walking, the whispers stop as well and when he continues, the whispers are back louder than ever. Some viewers commented saying they thought it was the sound of demons or some sort of demonic ritual. Another sub said the sound was of the spirits of the miners who had died there. What's creepy to me is that he went to explore this cave on a stormy night. Like, do you not know what happens on stormy nights, Frank? People get killed. That's what happens. Coming number 7 we have Bodie, California. Being alive during the gold rush would have been a crazy time. I mean, it's kind of like that now with kids trying to get famous on TikTok. You have all of them rushing out to make videos that no one's gonna watch for people who don't care them all because they don't have any real skills. The gold rush was like that except you would have to move your whole family hundreds of miles across the country by buggy and half of you would die along the way like in the game Oregon Trail. And then you would get to where you're going and you would hope that you would get rich but you'll probably just end up finding rocks and loneliness. Well, if you want to find a taste of that, head over to Bodie, California. It's amazing to think that people once thought this would be the best place to set up since it's extremely close to a desert. But it used to be a bustling town with people craving gold more than I crave street fight videos. Now at number 6 is a Dugan Quarry. Located near the suburbs of Moscow, a Dugan Quarry started operating in the 16th century, extracting limestone. And this quarry is massive, it's more than 5,000 meters is long and it's been abandoned for centuries, meaning you can go explore its tunnels for sure, but without a map, your ass is getting lost and dying. The dilapidated quarry has so many old artifacts like the clothes of previous workers, burners where they cooked food, you can even see real sleepers which is so creepy, like how could anyone have slept there? The structure of the mine is also complicated as hell so you actually shouldn't go in without a professional guide. It looks like it's gonna fall on top of you any second because all the passages are made out of stone. Just stone. Where's the cement? 
Where's the... Where's the earthquake proof like Bendy? Coming in at number five, we have Cody, British Columbia. Now let's jet over to my home province of British Columbia. It's known for being beautiful with lush green forest and mountains so high they look like they were pulled out of Lord of the Rings. And nature has taken back what used to be the town of Cody, British Columbia. The place was booming in the 1800s because five separate mines were discovered in the area. This brought in a bunch of jobs and an equal amount of people. It would seem that the money would never stop, but come turn of the century, everything Things started to dry up when people's values changed and the mine life was no longer as profitable. The town was trying to stay afloat, but a massive fire in the 1940s would seal the deal for this forgotten relic. Now trees and green have enveloped the shell of this former township. And number four is Teche Tolfa Ein. Yeah, that was a mouthful, but then again, any German word usually is. Located in the German city of Essen, this coal mine first became operational in 1834 and is actually under UNESCO protection. Some of its quarries would turn into mining museums after the mine shut down in 1986. The mine is open to the public since it attracts a lot of tourism, it has the artifacts, the history, the culture, it's bloody called Teche Tolfein for God's sake. I mean, I would go there just to say it over and over again. Teche Tolfein, Teche Tolfein. <laughs> Remix that. <laughs> but many industrialists who have visited the mine claim to have heard abnormal knocks down there. Tourists have also heard unexplainable faint sounds of men and their tools at work. Work, making it sound like active work is still going on when it isn't and hasn't for centuries. You know what that sounds like? Teche Tolfein. Going in at number three, we have a Louis Mine, Morocco. Sometimes what's left behind will show you how powerful the human spirit can be. The Louis Mine looks like a sheer test of willpower as it's carved into the side of a mountain. It was controlled by the French for nearly 30 years while Morocco was under French control. After the French left, however, the mine fell into disarray as it was never the intention of the Moroccan people to create a mine there. What's left is a ghost town that hovers in the air like a fortress propped up by stone. Now number two is Kamioka Mine. So this abandoned mine is located in a ghost town of the same name in Japan. Founded in the 19th century, it was the country's leading source of zinc and it used to be one of the largest mines in East Asia. Scientists found a lot of cadmium ore deposits for the place was mined till the 80s. After that and the overall closing of industrial ore production, the village and mine both became deserted. The tunnels are honestly super eerie. The whole labyrinth is just there in ruins which attracts a lot of urban explorers. Now all the mines are located at least one kilometer under the surface and a lot of the rooms are actually flooded. The dripping water and rust is everywhere making the mine look super sinister. It actually reminds me of this horror movie that I watched called Creep. It's like German and British and these people discover this underground network of tunnels and a serial killer lives inside and then he obviously ends up killing everyone. You know how it is. Now the middle of the 20th century brought about a problem with this mine. Mining camp residents started getting sick with the diseases unknown to any scientists. Turns out the vapor of cadmium salt so Soaked into the earth of the island, making people sick. That's a messed up. Coming at the number one spot, we have the Serbian Ice Mine, a mine that has caught some notoriety for its frosty decor. I can't imagine something I would want to explore less. Something with a rocky floor, ice all over the walls, it's dark all the time, there's bugs and rodents everywhere, and the temperature is below freezing. Yeah, that sounds like a great first date spot. With all that being said, the frozen mine does look spectacular in some ways. The ice formations that have been built up from the slow water drips have left what looks like the jaw of a massive beast at the entrance of this underground warehouse. If you don't have a trained eye, you might think that those are massive stalactites and stalagmites, but it's actually just a whole bunch of ice. At least then, you don't have to worry about breaking them when you come to visit. If you venture deeper into this mine, you will see that the ice shows no mercy as frozen bats have been glued to the ceiling. When you start to see animals that have frozen to death and now their corpses are stuck on the walls like decorations, I think it would be time to turn around. Starting off this countdown, we have Dawson Mine. On October 22nd, 1913, an explosion occurred in the Dawson Mine, New Mexico. Sadly, around 263 miners were killed. But that wasn't the end of it. Tragedy continued to strike the mines and the workers. On February 8th, 1923, another explosion occurred. 
123 miners were killed in this explosion. Nowadays, this place has a reputation of being terribly haunted. Visitors have seen lights flickering on and off. The lights apparently look like ones on a mining helmet. And they have heard whispers and voices, or have even seen ghostly figures vanish right before their own eyes. To this day, one of the things that still remains in Dawson is a pile of white crosses, representing all the lives that were lost there. In our ninth spot, we have Seaham Coal Mine. In 1880, an underground explosion in this mine caused 160 people to lose their lives, including people in and around the mines, and some of the rescuers. The cause of this accident is still unknown. It wasn't just the miners or nearby workers affected though. A woman dropped dead after hearing news that her brother died. Some other individuals took their own lives because they couldn't handle the tragedy. As a result, a number of places became haunted. Not just the mine, but the homes of the people who died in the tragedy as well. In our eighth spot, we have Morpha Coal Mine. In 1890, this mine saw one of the worst mining disasters in Wales. An explosion caused 89 people to lose their lives. But this wasn't the first time that tragedy had struck the area. In 1858, a series of explosions killed four men. In 1863, 40 men lost their lives, and in 1870, 29 people lost their lives. Hence why this mine is now considered cursed. In fact, it's been given the name the Pit of Ghosts. This is because there's a legend from the UK that says any spirit of anyone killed in a pit will hover around that spot forever. Since these disasters, a number of unexplainable events have happened in the mine. In fact, men refused to work down there because they kept seeing and hearing strange lights. Apparently, the ghosts would make their presence known by knocking on the walls and wailing loudly. Coming in at number seven, we have Oaks Mining Pit. In 1866, a series of explosions ripped through the mine for two days. As a result, 361 men died in this mine. Of course, after so, people were terrified to go back into the mine, not because of what happened, but because it was now haunted. In fact, the UK Paranormal X team investigated the mine and said that it was filled with negative energy and even demonic activity. Further investigation led them to discover that the land itself was cursed. If the land is cursed, well, that means anything on the land is also cursed as well. Moving on to number six, we have San Manuel Magma Copper Mine. Now, this is said to be one of the largest underground copper mines in the world, but it's also one of the most haunted mines in the world. So located in San Manuel, Arizona, this mine is haunted by ghost miners. One famous ghost that people often see is called White Boots. They gave him the name because the spirit is always seen wearing a pair of white boots. Other people down there have experienced unexplained lights and sounds. However, this mine was closed in 2003. Since then, White Boots has apparently terrorized other mines all over the world. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Sterling Hill Mine. Located in New Jersey, this mine opened in 1897 by the New Jersey Zinc Company, and it was in operation until 1986. However, during its 90 years of operation, the mine saw nearly 80 deaths. Although this mine is closed, it still holds the reputation of being undeniably haunted. A number of people have heard footsteps, voices, and whispers coming through the mine. In fact, some have even seen shadowy figures or faces while down there exploring. According to local legend, one of the spirits is a former miner named Bicycle Pete. Basically, legend goes that after the mine closed in 1986, miner Pete continued to ride his bike around town and near the mine. One day, he never returned home. He went missing. Eventually, his bicycle was recovered, but Pete was never seen again. Now it's said that his soul haunts the mine. Apparently, if someone yells, Bicycle Pete, down into the mine, taunting him, Pete might just pull them in and they'll suffer the same fate that he did. In our fourth spot, we have Platteville Haunted Mine. Located in Wisconsin, Platteville Mine opened in 1845. And ever since it did, it's been plagued with tragedy. From miners perishing down there to people who went down there to take their own lives. In fact, to this day, the miners can still be seen haunting the mines. Not only that, but a man hung himself in the mine and he has been seen a number of times appearing in an apparition form with the rope still dangling from his neck. 
Nowadays, if you really want to explore the mine, you can. Around Halloween, the town offers haunted mine tours. You can even ride the 1931 mine train down into the mines to see what it was like for the miners. In our third spot, we have the Great Western Coal Mine. On April 11th of 1893, a nasty fire occurred in the coal mine. Sadly, this led to the deaths of 63 men and boys. A total of 200 were reported as trapped, but only 150 were rescued. By April 14th, 53 bodies had been recovered. The rest they couldn't find. Basically what happened was a haulage engine set fire and nearby drop sheets caught on fire. Then the fire spread with ease. It ignited the timber supports before filling the mine with smoke and fumes. After this tragedy, people reported the mine being haunted. Some say if you're down there too long, you'll start to feel heat and smell smoke. Some have even seen apparitions of the miners burning to death in the fire. In our second spot today, we have Kennecott Mine. Located in Alaska, Kennecott was a city once filled with millions of dollars worth of copper ore. So when copper ore was first discovered on the land, workers set out to create a mine and track system. But this led to tons of deaths. During the construction of the mine, tons of individuals lost their lives. The death toll continued to increase when the mine opened. A number of miners lost their lives to cave-ins and unsafe working conditions. And that's when the haunting started. Miners got so scared that they didn't want to continue working. They reported hearing cries for help from the dead miners. Sometimes the ghosts would even taunt them and move their tools from them. Nowadays, the mines are abandoned and the town is now considered a ghost town. Quite literally too. And in our number one spot today, we have Levac Mine. Over the years, this mine has terrified a number of people. It all started back in the 1970s. It was a normal weekend and three people were working there. This included the single hoist man, an operating shaft boss, and a fire guard. Everything was going well until the fire guard decided to descend into the mine at night. That's when the operating shaft boss got a panic call from him, telling him that he had seen things and that he needed to get out of there. When he finally got to the fire guard, he was a mess, panicking like crazy. Apparently, he had seen someone down there, but he knew that was impossible for someone else to be down there. He knew that what he saw was a ghost. Ever since then, the mine has had a reputation for being haunted. A number of other people have also seen ghosts down there as well. At number 10, we have Jay Frazina in the Austrian Caves. If the show Planet Earth has taught me anything, it's that caves are dark and beautiful ecosystems that are teeming with life. And in this video, there's a shot of some of that life that seems to be something I've never seen before. In this video, Jay Frazina is on a little hiking trip in Austria. She's with a whole group, so it seems like she should be pretty safe. Unless you're the one person on the tour who they forget and then you get stuck in the cave and then you're like on the side of a mountain for the rest of your life getting attacked by bears. That could happen. Well this mountain tour leads to a cave and then they start to check it out. Caves are really one of the marvels of the world. Just then she's surprised by some sort of creature. There's someone climbing up the wall. It's an ice man. It's a ghost. Jesus, what is that? Do you see that? <laughs> oh my god. What the hell? is that thing. It looks like some sort of lizard man working its way up the wall with ease. It's really far away so it's super hard to tell what this thing is or how big it is, but it's some sort of beast man living in the cave climbing up the walls. That's what it looks like. I'm gonna say just let this thing be and don't bother checking it out. At number 9 we have the Risa Tunnels creature. So during World War II the Germans wanted to build some sort of tunnels in the Owl Mountains all the way over in Poland. Why did they want to do this? Well we have no idea. Hitler was into all sorts of weird stuff. He had troops out there looking for magical artifacts. I guess if he won the war, he wanted to be a part-time warlock. Well, some people not so long ago wanted to go check out these tunnels to see what was going on in them, and they were in for a bit of a shock. This group of dudes was walking through when they saw this. Here's another man just running around in caves, I guess. Is there a whole world of things underneath us that we don't know about? That thing did look kinda like a humanoid. It looks like it was running around on two legs, but obviously it was moving very fast because by the time they turned the corner to look at it, it was gone. At number eight, we have Satan's Cave. Well, if you're a kid growing up in Minneapolis, I can imagine you get bored really quick. So finding a cave to walk around in probably sounds better than smoking weed in the park with all your friends and complaining about your mom. Now this group of kids went into some 
some caves underneath Minneapolis in search of what's called Satan's Cave. They end up walking through what kind of looks like a sewer with a bunch of graffiti on the walls and some strange demonic faces that have been carved all over the place. Now this is super strange, but they want to get to Satan's Cave, so they continue past the demonic art deco. Eventually they get to a tunnel that heads straight down so far you can't see the bottom of it. This could be what they were looking for, but naturally they were like, screw this, and decide to turn back and exit the cave. Probably a smart move. At number 7 we have Train Tunnel Surprise. So what's a tunnel and what's a cave? It's kind of like a tomato tomato situation. They're both holes in the ground where everything is dark and spooky. So I'm probably going to throw a few tunnels on this list and I don't care what you guys say because who cares? It's a tunnel or a cave. It doesn't matter. Well a bunch of teens thought it would be a good idea to try and walk through a train tunnel in the middle of the night. These tunnels are right next to Odell Lake in Oregon. And usually there's large transport trains moving through them. Well guess what happened while they were crossing through? A train showed up. Yeah who would have thought of that? A train coming along train tracks? Well these kids had to jump off the tracks and press themselves against the walls while standing in some gross swamp water so the train didn't run them over. Luckily nobody was hurt. Alright guys at number 6 we have Lost. Ok getting lost in a cave is one thing. You could probably last for at least a few days until people found you. But getting lost in a cave underwater while you're free diving, you have minutes before your air runs out. Well Kodiak Moraski was doing some sport fishing while free diving. He was chasing down a little lobster and then got a little too far into a cave. This got him all turned around and he couldn't find his way out. He started to panic but luckily he was able to find which way he came Came in. I guess the scary encounter in this cave was almost drowning to death. You're fine, just breathe out the rig, Gina. I can't get some. Put it's a regulator in your mouth. Wow, I don't know what's going on. At number five, we have Nick in the Caves. Ok this one has got a lot going on. This starts with a Russian YouTuber named Nick. He's got a channel where he explores creepy caves and places like that. On one episode he decides to explore some old Russian caves with some friends. While exploring he gets into a section that is so tight he has to take his backpack off and leave it behind. And then he gets separated from his friends. He explores a bit without his stuff and then comes to some strange sections. There's a part with a jug it's set up to catch water but it's like who is that for? This is in a cave in the middle of nowhere. Eventually he's freaked out. And he heads back the way he came. He gets back to his backpack and he sees that it's been opened and his stuff is scattered everywhere. Who or what did this? While he's collecting his things you can see a pair of eyes in the reflection of the camera. He doesn't see this until he refused the footage but you can see these dark eyes peering at him through the darkness. It's very creepy. My hair is standing up just talking about it. At number 4 we have big ol spider. Alright this one is simple. Mikael Krosberg was in a cave in Laos and then he found a giant spider. He said it was as big as a pizza. That's super gross. This thing is so big it looks like it could eat a pug. Honestly to be number 4 on the list that's all you need. You don't need to be something supernatural or like some demon from another dimension. It just needs to be a super gross spider because I think they're disgusting and I don't want anything to do with them. That's how you get number 4 on this list. At number 3 we have the cave of screaming terror. Ok right off the bat you call a place the cave of screaming terror and I'm not going to visit. I don't think anyone in their right mind would think this is a fun place to check out. While you're at it why don't you go check out the house of the soul suckers or the forest of getting kicked in the nuts. Well this one dude went for a swim in the cave because most of the cave is submerged so if you're going to go inside you have to swim. And he doesn't even bring a boat to go in. He's just straight up swimming in it. That's asking for some cave creature to pull Pull you down and rip your insides out. The dude swimming was Don L. Buckley, and while he was going for his nice little float through the cave, he started to hear this. I don't know if that's a bird or whatever that could be, but whatever it is, Don L. didn't want to figure out where it was coming from, and he beelined it out of there. Good idea. At number 2 we have MJ in the cave. The ghost of Michael Jackson was attacking people in a cave and it was all caught on camera. Nah I'm just lying to you guys because that's fun for me. We're not talking about the famous pop star Michael Jackson. We're talking about the YouTuber Mark Johnson of course. He was exploring the cave of the winds in Colorado when several paranormal encounters happened. First we have this weird noise that kind of sounds like a ghost farting or dropping a massive turd. Probably kick on the uh, spirit box here in a minute and that will be Do you think you still have to crap in the afterlife? Do you believe in ghost poops? Please 
Let us know your thoughts in the comments. It's not long after this that we see another paranormal encounter. An orb! I don't know much about ghosts because I don't spend my time watching ghost hunters. I've got better things to do, like literally anything else. But those orbs are supposed to be ghosts walking around doing like ghost stuff, like slamming doors and watching you sleep. Okay you guys, we're on to number one now. And the number one spot on our list goes to an account from a parkouring dog. Oh, he's so cute. You guys have probably seen this dog all over the internet. His name is Tret, he's a pit bull, and he can climb trees and do all sorts of cool stunts. Well, one day his owner was taking this good old boy out for a walk when he came across an old well. A well is basically a cave, it's just like sticking in a different direction, you guys know. Wells are still in the theme of caves, especially if they're old and abandoned. Tret's owner hears something weird coming out of the well, so he decides to take a cool little video and then we see this happen. What? the hell is that? It definitely doesn't look like something that should be hanging out in a forest. It looks like something that came out of the gates of hell. But let me know what you guys think of this thing in the comments and let me know if you thought this one was deserving of the number one spot. Coming in number 10 now, we have the Hellfire Caves. The name like that, it obviously had to be on the list. These caves in England sprawl for a quarter of a mile underground and were first excavated in the 1700s. The man responsible for the excavation was Francis Dashwood. He was the co-founder of the Hellfire Club, a secret society said to have held meetings in the caves. As the years rolled on, the caves became famous for the group's supposed dark rituals, orgies, and devil worship. The group eventually disbanded, but something seemed to stay behind there. Those who visit the caves say they feel a presence, the ghosts of the members still wandering the dimly lit rooms. Apparitions appear and then disappear in front of people's eyes. Echoes come from nowhere and last for ages, and a deep sense of dread grips people as they go further into the caves. Next up number nine now, we have the Bell Witch Cave. According to legend, in 1804, a farmer called John Bell bought some land in Tennessee for his family to live in. There was a cave on the property which locals claimed was haunted by a woman called Kate Batts, who felt she was cheated by the Bell family in the land purchase. By 1817, strange sightings had started happening of animals and apparitions. The family would hear knocking on their door and dragging along the walls outside of the house. When they went to investigate, there was always nothing there. They began to hear choking and growling noises. Their youngest daughter was scratched by unseen forces. She had her hair pulled and was beaten to a pulp. Once the family were driven out, the hauntings seemed to stop. Locals say the Bell Witch returned to her cave where she still remains to this day. Visitors can take a tour, but it is not for the faint-hearted. Moving on to number eight now, we have the Cave of Sibyl. The ancient Greeks, like many cultures around the world, believed there were certain portals on earth to the underworld and that naturally they should be avoided. To them, the cave of Sibyl was one of them. It's located in the ancient Greek settlement of Cume, near what is now modern day Naples. According to legend, even birds won't fly over the cave for fear of being pulled into the underworld. Locals say the 700 year old oracle of the dead called Priestess Sibyl guards the gateway and acts as a sort of guide for people on their descent towards Hades. She won't take you to the underworld if you avoid the cave but if you step inside, some say you're as good as dead. Moving on to number seven now, we have the Well of Sacrifice. This one is located a short walk from the main city of Chichen Itza. Many tourists visit that ancient pyramid site, but not as many people go to the Well of Sacrifice nearby. How do I know? Well, I was one of them. I went to Chichen Itza the other year, but I didn't know that this was just around the corner. Perhaps that's for the best though. The Well of Sacrifice is a limestone sinkhole cave. In 1904, an American explorer dredged it to collect pieces of gold, copper, and pottery from the water below. He was amazed to find just how old and far flown the artifacts were. However, the dredging also uncovered a very dark Mayan secret. He found bodies, lots of them. The cave contained the remains of at least 120 adults and many children. The bones seemed to suggest that the victims had been flayed. The findings seemed to fit with the ancient stories of Mayans pushing people into the hole while they were still alive. A 65 foot fall into the water probably wouldn't have killed them, which meant they drowned while trying to use their broken limbs to stay afloat. What a horrible thought.
Next up at number 6 now, we have the Chislehurst Caves. This vast complex in England contains some 22 miles of passageway split into three distinct sections named Saxon, Druid and Roman. They later join up through other connecting passages. People have mined the caves there for thousands of years, but the earliest written record comes from around 1250. In more modern times, the mines were home to people escaping the bombing of London during the Second World War. The history, turmoil and darkness of these stony hallways seems to have intertwined and left a very dark energy behind. People regularly report hearing screams, murmurs, children giggling and footsteps echoing from deep within the labyrinth. Locals say it's the ghosts of those who died there and want to let the living know of their eternal horror. Moving on to number 5 now, we have the Moaning Cavern. These caves are found in Velocito, California and when people say they moan, they aren't kidding. Air is whipped through the caverns creating this sort of strange moaning sound throughout them. That's the official explanation anyway. Locals have a different story. They say it's down to the Tommy Knockers, strange mythical leprechaun-like creatures. Some believe they are the spirits of those who have died in the caves over the years. Why are these Tommy Knockers there? Well, opinion is divided on that too. Some say the creatures are warning cavers of potential collapses. Others say they are actually evil spirits who cause those collapses which kill people. Either way, many people avoid the caves because they don't want to take the risk of finding out which way they will go. Coming at number four now, we have Robber's Cave. This one is located in Nebraska and has long been known as a sacred meeting spot for the Pawnee Indians. The cave system lies directly below an area where the tribe used to carry out traditional practices such as healing, animal spirit powers, and medicinal work. Some say the deep connection they made with the earth there has had a lasting impact on the land. Long after the area was abandoned, locals claim they still hear the sounds of beating drums and chanting as if the rituals are being performed by the ghosts there. They also say that from the outside you can hear screams and moans coming from the caves. Moving on to number three now, we have the Mammoth Cave. This one really creeped me out for a number of different reasons. Firstly, it's huge. This Kentucky cave is said to contain 400 miles of explored area and that's only the parts we know of. Experts say there could be a lot more we haven't seen yet. Archaeological evidence seems to suggest that Native Americans were mining the cave as far back as 4,000 years ago. They did this very successfully, using the materials to make tools and weapons. At one point, they even began burying their dead there. Things continued like this for another 2,000 years, but then, for some reason, they abandoned the cave and never returned. All evidence suggests they just left the cave and never went back again. What was the reason for this? Did they find something horrific in the depths of the cave system or did something find them? The only way to find out is to keep exploring it. Any volunteers? Next up at number two now, we have the Washaba Street Caves. This one is quite unique in a number of ways. Firstly, it looks like a normal building from the outside, located in St. Paul, Minnesota. It was built into sandstone caves along the Mississippi River, so that locals could mine silica. Over the years though, it was overrun by gangsters who used the caves as a base of operations. According to legend, these gangsters were gunned down in the caves in the early 1930s. The brutality of their deaths left restless spirits behind in the caves. The ghostly sightings of them have continued to this day. Some even say the ghosts have begun to wander out of the caves and into the cafe next door, giving people the fright of their lives. Staff and customers have reported seeing the apparitions of a woman sitting at the bar with a man in a Panama hat. Many people would want to avoid seeing such a sight, but if you do, they have a cave tour there for just $8. Not bad. And finally number one now, we have the Devil's Hole. This is a very famous creepy cave that lies near Niagara Falls. The 20 foot deep cave was first talked about by the Native Americans of the area. They said the cave was the home of a demon like snake called the Evil One. He is said to embody everything evil in the world. Some of the tribe who entered never came out. Others returned with their hair turned from black to solid white in pure terror from their encounter. They couldn't even describe what they had seen because they lost their minds inside the cave. They tried to warn the early French explorers of the evil inside, but they didn't listen. One of them went inside and was murdered shortly after by his own men. In 1763, a conflict occurred between the British and the Native Americans there. The result was 80 British soldiers being scalped and thrown into the cave along with their horses. Although it's been many years since these events, people say you can still feel the evil presence by simply walking past the entrance to the cave. Mm -hmm.